Change is the only constant. Well, this quote fits really well in the world of mobile app development. No wonder there is a buzz for new technologies every now and then. Developers are looking for technologies that have a quick deployment time, shorter development cycles, and deliver better app performance. Hence, everyone wants to create apps that provide seamless user experience, are faster to develop, and can run on more than one platform. And guess what came? React Native, a framework designed by Facebook, is upping the ante for the mobile apps. Hello everyone, I am Rupal Chakravarti and here I am presenting the top 10 React Native best practices. Before I go into the discussion, I would request you to subscribe to our channel if you are enthusiastic about product design and development, startups and entrepreneurships. We discuss a lot of problems and solutions in the tech world, how it can solve your business problem. We also send a lot of free giveaways like ebook, templates, worksheets to our subscribers regularly. So let's continue our discussion on React Native. So what is React Native and how it came? React Native has been in the market for almost four years now and is literally taking over the development process. It is used for building native Android and iOS mobile applications using JavaScript and React. React is a JavaScript library for creating UI. Since React leverages the complex UI to component based UI, we can utilize the same small UI components into React Native's iOS and Android apps. Instead of recompiling, you can reload the React Native apps instantly. While hot reloading, you can even run a new code while retaining our application state. The primary focus of React Native is on developer efficiency across iOS and Android platforms you care about. Learn once, write everywhere. Whether you want to create an Uber for laundry service, a remarkable medical marijuana app, a feature-rich food delivery app, or Uber for any on-demand industry, React Native is the answer. Friends, we have created another useful blog on following the five object-oriented principles in React Native architecture. I have provided the link in the description box below. Go through it for a better understanding of React Native, how in React and React Native, there are many best practices to follow for getting the best result and deliver the native mobile apps using JavaScript. Let's talk on the top 10 React Native best practices. Point number one, classify the component first. Components should be broken down into two main categories, presentation component and container component. The presentation component is mainly concerned on how the things look, how it allows the containment via this.props.children. What styles have to be implemented? The presentation component also does not specify how the data is loaded or mutated. Also, it receives data and callbacks exclusively via props. The container components, on the other hand, is concerned with how things work and uses higher order components for wrapping divs. Again, it provides presentational or other container components with data and behavior. Point number two, use functional components for stateless presentation components. Since stateless presentation component is only dealing with styles and UI, we should use a functional component for this. Here's how you can make use of a functional component. Point number three, use class component for stateful container components. Class components are stateful and contain lifecycle methods such as component did mount, component will unmount, component will receive props, should component update, etc and some custom methods. Since container component basically deals with state and does data fetching and then renders its corresponding subcomponent, so to develop it, we should use class component. Point number four, key of each element in the list should be unique. In React, unique keys help identify which items have been changed, are added or are removed. The best way to choose a key 
is to use a string that identifies a list item among its siblings uniquely. We recommend to use IDs from your list items as keys. Point number five, manage static image resources. React Native integrates the images and other media assets in such a way that you can support your iOS and Android apps. To add a static image in your app, you have to do in such a way that the image name is required has to be known statically. Point number six, use Redux.js for managing states and business logic. React is just for UI. Now the question is where to put all my state and business logic. Redux comes here to maintain the state and business logic in an efficient way because Redux architecture typically deals with large scale apps development. Now let's see how Redux works. When a UI event happens in the component, callback functions as props get called. Based on the event, the callbacks create and dispatch actions, reduces process the actions, computing the new state. The new state of the app goes into a single store. The new state as props are received and are re-rendered themselves when in needed in components. Point number seven, optimize React Native images and store it in cloud storage. Optimizing React Native images should be your higher priority, whatever your requirements are. So resize the images locally and upload the images to the cloud storage like S3 by server and get the CDN link and return them back using an API. In this process, you can load the images in a faster way. Point number eight, feedback, highlighting and cancelability should be there in gesture responder system. To make users feel great using your app, every action should have the following attributes. Feedback, highlighting. Let's the user know what is handling their touch and what will happen when they release their gesture. Cancelability. When performing an action, let the user about it mid-touch by dragging their fingers away. These features makes users feel more comfortable using your application because it lets people experiment and interact without the fear of making mistakes. Point number nine, use platform specific code and styles. Though React Native offers built-in APIs to write your code that works on both the platform, you will always end up writing platform specific things like style sheets and callbacks. To organize your code better, use the platform module for style sheets is the best way to manage the styles. For example, you can use the platform.os or the platform.select APIs to automatically detect the platform and apply the right styles. Here I present to you a demo that shows how the platform module should be configured. Point number 10, log dependencies prevent the breaking changes. While adding more and more dependencies, make sure to log the version. Please beware of those breaking changes. Keep an eye on especially the JavaScript because the JavaScript library scenes are going really fast. The fact that it helps you build the complex UI in such a jiffy and works seamlessly for iOS and Android. React Native is undoubtedly the new hope in 2020. If you are in JavaScript, you will find how the intuitive the learning curve is from ReactJS to React Native, an easier way to use our beloved React. And I have tried to present the top 10 React Native best practices. Please share this video with any of your friends and colleagues who are either launching an application or in a process of creating one or who already has one. This video might help them to succeed faster. If you have any other React Native best practices on your mind, I want to know about it. So please share your ideas with me and with your audience in the comment section. Let us know how you think about it and what worked for you. Subscribe to our channel, click the bell icon button to stay updated. Please like and share this video and spread the message. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon.